So, Mr. Cornfed, I understand you recently joined the unemployed. What makes you think we'd have an opening here? Well, guess. Do you have a resume? I just threw it together this morning. Hmm. I see you were a member of the Irish Parliament. Sure, and Bigora. And under your interest, you list origami. What exactly is that? Got a matchbook. Impressive. But do you know anything about mail? Hmm. Postal worker in rural China? Avid stamp collector? Author, so you want to be a mailman? <laughs> well, Mr. Cornfed, when can you start? No time like the present. Could I use the restroom first? Sure, you can't miss it. Uh, make a right at the cow bones grinding and marrow extraction room, a quick left at the chicken squeezing ovum cracking pit, and then a sharp circle round the gobstopper and gizzard suction chamber. I'll hold it in. Sure, you're starting at the bottom. But like in every big corporation, some of our most promising executives to be are working right here in the mail room. Your job is just to sort the mail, if you can hold on to it. Got any napkins? Napkins? That's brilliant! Yeah, man. Great idea. Mr. Cornfed, you're going places here. In fact, next opening we get, you're moving out of this mail room. First day, Corny. Glad to be aboard, Bob. I don't care if you are just working here till you graduate from astronaut school and orbit that planet. Everyone knows a baker's dozen is 13. Duck. Moron! No, I mean duck. You... you took a bullet from me? It's all right. I've got another kidney. Who are you? The name's Corn Fed. Well, I'm Duck Man. You want to be my partner? Sure. If I don't die. Oh, that's smart. You're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. I'll get you to the hospital. What's the last thing I do? I won't think about anything else till I know you're all right. These things free. <laughs> oh well, there's always dialysis. Three times? He didn't even know you, and he saved your life three times! Yeah, I vaguely remember that. He's a good person, isn't he? The way he never thinks of himself, always puts others first. He is a better person than me. That's why I did what I did. I'm jealous. I shouldn't feel that way about my best friend. I should be thankful he is my friend. I should get down on my knees and thank my lucky stars that a person like Cornfed is even in my life. Morning, ma'am. I'm Pig. Detective Cornfed Pig. I need to see the body of Vile Kyle. Sorry, Mr. Pig. I can't just let anyone who comes in off the street wanting to see the corpse of a dead action hero have free reign around the place. We run a very tight operation here. I understand. Ma'am, would it be forward to tell you that your voice is of the sirens, your breath is of the lilacs, and your skin is of the soft downy wool of a newborn lamb? Yes, it would. What if I told you you had a great rack? Oh, you're just saying that. scars. That means he still has his adrenal gland. Friend of mine's nutsy Fagin because he thinks he has vile cow's gland. There was an adrenal gland transplant that day. It came from a dyslexic accountant who got run over by the ambulance that was on its way to save a duck. So Duckman never did have vile cow's gland, which means in 15 minutes he and his kids are going to attempt an incredibly dangerous stunt where he'll probably plummet to his death on national television unless I stop it. Got time for a quickie? Sure, those things never start on time. <laughs> will attempt the impossible, riding a unicycle across a 10-pound test line while wearing a lead suit and carrying his sons on a balance ball. Dad, this is the best time of our young lives. We've learned
learned so much more out here with you than we ever did in school. Things like, it's fun to be fawned over by drooling sycophants, and if you're big enough, people will have to put up with you. Dawn, just in case this is our final ten minutes of quality time together, do you have any last words we can take through life with us? Live fast, die young, and always take care of our luggage. Because baggage lines are usually pretty long. Sometimes people have to fill out those little address labels, and then you end up running all the way to the plane. Thanks, Dawn. Got the lid on? Now let's get the lid out! Duckman, sorry I'm late, but the elevator's broken. You ran up 140 flights of stairs? Guess that would have been easier than climbing the side of the building. Look, I have to tell you something important. You have the adrenal gland of an accountant who is dyslexic. Baltish! I'll prove it to you. Vile Kyle died by the grassy knoll at 9.48 p.m. Yet your adrenal gland operation took place at 10.01 p.m. on the other side of the amusement park by the book depository. Are we to actually believe that this magic gland made it from his body to yours within 13 minutes? I think not. That's why I propose the second gland theory. You mean, I'm not really a daredevil? A hero to millions? A role model to my kids? In your desire to be a better father, you overcompensated, using the gland transplant as an excuse for living a lie and performing increasingly stupid, harebrained, and jackass stunts, endangering your own life and now your children's. Not that it doesn't have a certain entertainment value. Call this off, Duck Man, before it's too late. I can't, Corny. I'd let down my kids. This would crush them. For the first time in their lives, they actually look up to me. They think I'm brave. They think I'm a good father. A good father is a father who's alive to be a father and whose real bravery comes in saying no to his kids, daring to be unliked by doing the right thing. Hard to believe these are the dismembered remains of Dr. Milo, the bloody tatters of his lifeless corpse splattered on the walls like so much worthless refuse. You think that's bad? Look at the room they gave me! No air, no cable, no continental breakfast with those cute little jars of grape jelly. At least Milo's suffering is over! Sacrifice is often a part of undercover work, Duckman. Yeah, yeah. What's the story with your shoes? They're soaked. Oh, T. One of the office girls did a cannonball in my jacuzzi. Jacuzzi! Never mind that. We have to start our investigation. What investigation? The cops checked it out, decided it was natural causes. He exploded. Hey, the human body's an ever-unfolding mystery. So, I'm famished. How's about we blow this pop psychology stand and grab us a couple of dozen greasy cheeseburgers? Duckman, a detective lives by his code, and under that code, the case survives the client. By the way, also under that code, detectives get 20% off at Red Lobster, but don't even think about that now. I've done some preliminary work, including a modest-scale model recreation of the crime scene. This is an exact replica of my cell. Actually, it's not. My walls are asbestos-free. Maybe the group therapy session I'm taking over for Dr. Milo will help us put a few more pieces together. Are you coming? When pigs can fly! I'm still not coming! I'm tired, I'm cold, and I've gotta get a room upgrade! I'm sorry, Duckman, but it's crucial that we maintain our secret identities at whatever cost to our personal comfort. Doctor, it's up to 102! Somebody got a fever? No, it's my sauna. Tell the other nurses I have a session first. If they get too warm, the towels are optional. <laughs> Saunas, nurses, jacuzzis! Where the hell do you get off town? <laughs> Admittedly, the almost godlike ramifications could be a bit seductive. <laughs> Say compulsive aggressive! Thank you all for coming. I'm pleased to announce that I've solved Dr. Milo's murder. His killer is in this very room with us now. <gasps> Initially, I believed the doctor to be yet another victim of your common, everyday, spontaneous combustion. Until I noticed that his remains had an odor vaguely reminiscent of northwestern Wisconsin, i.e. dairy country. This was especially curious considering Milo's having overcome a childhood addiction to the lactose found in dairy products. An addiction which, in conjunction with a strange glandular condition, caused him to swell to 340 pounds by age 8. <laughs> On the night of the murder, the doctor retired to his study for his nightly repast of beef klasky and potatoes chupo. Or so he thought. Milo's potatoes had been replaced with ultra-rich vanilla ice cream, causing his taut body to start reverting back to its childhood girth. Hoping to counteract the effect with healthier food, he bit into a banana. But sadly, said banana had been replaced by a banana-shaped wedge of Swiss Gouda. Desperate for relief, Milo tried to brush the taste from his mouth. But as any child of four could tell you, the ADA does not recommend brushing with cheese whiz. In a last-ditch attempt to pass the offending substances through his system, he rushed to his trusty water cooler. Regrettably, the water had been exchanged for Farmer Fred's Grade A pasteurized milk. That is, the new see-through crystal light version. And that, as they say, was that. 
Finally, Dr. Milo's remains were dumped into the toilet, the murderer thinking they'd be flushed away forever. Little did anyone know, however, that the facility's waste and sewage never actually leave the building. Go on, Corny. Tell us who the murderer is. Tell us who did it. You want to know who did it? Okay, I'll tell you. They all did it. All five of them played a part. Four of them responsible for switching a different food, one of them for the demeaning, degrading, and ultimately unsuccessful job of flushing the remains down the toilet. <laughs> and all because they were being denied their addictions. A mass tantrum by a group of spoiled children who in their whole lives have never been told no. This is outrageous! You can't prove we did anything wrong! Yes, he can! Look! If I remember correctly, the NRA gangbang special. For the times when nothing but a group kill will do. And I'd recognize those trigger fingers anywhere. Okay, we did it. But we have to ask Dr. Gilman. How did you know? As fate would have it, my own addiction. Murder, she wrote, reruns on USA. Check local listings for showtimes. I knew if I came up with a preposterous solution that had a blatant disregard for the facts and defied all logic, then told it in flashback, it would be true. Monkeys off our backs. We're going home. Hi, Duckman, have captured the murderer. Zip it, Dorkman. While you were out playing slap and tickle with your new bondage buddy, Cornfed already solved the case. Milo's patience did it. That's impossible. I almost killed myself capturing him. He has to be guilty. He has to. He has to be guilty. He has to be guilty. I want to be the captain. Cyrus Herring, DEA. I've been undercover here for three months. These people were putting unadvertised food additives in their kelp. No charges. It's enough punishment just being him. Want me to drop these five off? I pass the jail. I was thinking we could stop off for a hot dog. Speaking of hot dogs, you ever wonder why they call them Franks? I mean, why not Stans or Bobs? Poor guy. No one told him they're not funny after they've cleaned up. Conventional efforts to free Duckman have failed, so I've had to resort to my emergency contingency plan. Wow! Don't you ever knock! Duckman, I'm afraid we'll have to dispense with our usual time-killing lively banter. You're in terrible danger. The fact that you're enjoying your time here like it's a vacation has convinced them that you're really crazy and they've scheduled you for electroshock. That's ridiculous. I stole your chart. Take a look. Electroshock is like a bad thing, right? I've planned your escape. Let's go. Ouch! It's me. I'm disguised as a psychotic delusion. Typical mental health professionals refuse to acknowledge any violation of their hyper-rational worldview. As a result, they can't see me. <laughs> I see a monster! Of course you do. Medication! I brought one for you, too. Scarlett O'Hara? I had a lot of taffeta lying around. The monster's dating a fictional Civil War heroine. Of course he is. Straight jacket and gurney. So we can waltz right out of here without anyone seeing us? Yes, but be careful. We'll only stay delusions as long as we avoid anything these characters would ever actually say or do. Oh, Phil D. -D. What? It's a common expression. Holding me against my will is a violation of the Hippocratic Oath, the Geneva Convention, and the UN Charter. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee. Hmm. You are insane, and I can prove it. Hmm. A PTA meeting with cucumbers instead of parents. That's it! You're the first one to ever get it right! You're free to go. Thanks. Sorry. Look, a note from my family. Welcome home, Duckman. We have a dangerous gas leak and have fled for our lives. Go in and take care of it. Oh, how thoughtful. They spelled my name right. Hello, gas company. I have a dangerous leak. Well, great. Thank you. They said to wait here and they'll show up whenever they feel like it. Doesn't that annoy you? Of course not. After all, I'm paying them. Duckman, you can't keep waiting. Oh, nonsense. I'm sure they'll be here before winter. You need to get some fresh air. You're right, old friend. There's nothing like fresh air. Oh, well, serves me right for disobeying gas company orders. Breathe this. Terrific! What? what what's going on? I reversed your electroshock. Lucky I sent away for that course in neurosurgery. 
Hey, if Sally Struthers is selling, I'm buying. You see, Duck Man, I realize that it's the person who can cheerfully accept the madness of this world that is truly insane. You said a mouthful, old swine of mine. That hospital may have been a stinking hellhole, but the so-called normal world is really bad. So let's face it, the only answer, the only sane way to deal with any of this is ruthless random acts of violence, making sure they're all wiped out, the innocent and guilty alike, in a hail of gunfire, cleft in twain by my mighty sword, trampled into the dust and squashed like the stupid, tiny, unsafe segmented insects they are and of course i may need to do a little fine tuning talk about an outrage my life insurance is canceled why would they drop me could it be because you attempted to defraud them 10 times last month by falsely reporting your own death don't guess at things you can't be sure of there's good news though i may have found an answer life is cheap tell me about it just last week i was in a bar talking to a white slaver and... no 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 life is cheap insurance company this was on my doorstep listen Complete and mail the enclosed do-it-yourself physical to qualify for the most easy-to-afford and erratic life insurance available. Beats the heck out of some quack charging me through the bill just to grow up a bunch of places I don't even touch. Hardly ever. Says I need another person's help, though, someone with at least a minimal amount of medical knowledge. I graduated with honors from the Universidad de Medicino in Peru. But you're the son of poor Oaky Mountain Pigs. How'd you afford med school? Two words. Vivisection volunteer. Sure, it hurt, but I'm told as a result of banging me on the head with a large hammer and then slicing open my stomach and digging around in my insides, they were able to rule out two theories on why fat people perspire. Worthy cause. So, shall we get on with it? Bend over, grab the desk, and grit your teeth. Wait a minute. Does it say we have to do this? Never mind. Barney! Am I glad you're here? They stuck me in jail just because I said that the egg came before the chicken. Ah! They disagree. It's heresy in this town to challenge their theory of chicken creationism, the deeply held belief that the chicken came before the egg. It's the same kind of mindless, intellectually bankrupt belief system once found in the Druids, or the Reagan administration. Did you talk to my lawyer-slash-urologist, Donald the Shiv Grillo? Yes, but he didn't talk back. He's dead. A rare case of peacetime fragging. Damn Coast Guard Reserve. My watertight butt is in a sling! Now I have no lawyer to defend me! Objection. I clerked for a Supreme Court justice to finance my way through VCR repair school. Relax, duck man. I'll get you off. So, I mean, I'll see that you're found not guilty. Were you abused by your parents? No. Teased at school? No. A victim of racial rage? No. Sexually harassed? No. Fired for being chronically tardy? No. You ever eat Twinkies? It's no use! They've got me! Mother of mercy! Is this the end of Duckman? Duckman, we've been caged, beaten, chased by murderers, blasted by computers, and through all that, one thing never fails. The way you fall apart right before crunch time, crying and moaning like a spineless and pathetic little pansy. What's your point? No point. Just venting. <laughs> This is like coupon night at Sizzler. Strange. Last time I made this trip, it was as a young man, naively certain I was doing my duty for a country that neither believed in the war nor would appreciate my efforts when I returned. Inconceivable! An unconscionable travesty! There's like two peanuts in here! Anyway, it would all be worth it if it meant having something as special as a son. Uncle Corny, did you win any medals in the war? One or two. If we're to be effective as a band of rebels trying to bring down the Duckman regime, we must be in top fighting condition. Come at me. I'll show you. As members of the first family, we've gone disillusioned with our lives of decadence and hubris. And we want to save Dodd from his raging ego. Ajax, I think you mean ego. Oh, once again I've confused Dodd's psyche with a toasted breakfast food. Although the image of fighting off a bloodthirsty waffle will forever remain a favorite in the playground of my mind. I can't let you join us, boys. Regardless of the circumstances, the notion of teaching you to betray your own father paralyzes me with guilt. He called you a whiny little trough and turncoat who talks in a deep voice to overcompensate for his inadequacies with women. We'll start with 12 ways to impale a man on a palm frond. <laughs> people. Duckman has crippled your economy, ravaged your natural resources, shattered your spirit. Still, his name is on all my stationery. That's the 
the second dream vacation slash near-death experience you've put us through, Duckman. I'm starting to rethink our Christmas getaway to Iraq. Ingrates. Next time I become dictator of a small Latin American country, the first thing I'll do is kill everyone before they can turn on me. No lesson is ever lost on you, Duckman. Fascinating, isn't it? History shows us that however well-intentioned a revolt may be, people are still imperfect as rulers. No matter who you elect, eventually they grow corrupt. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Even in a society with an informed electorate, one that is willing to... examine all aspects, do things in... but not without going... It's a good thing Cornfed was here to rescue you today. Yeah, that was truly amazing how you ran up on stage, told a few amusing anecdotes, then reasoned the mob into taking the noose off his neck. Not to mention how you got everyone to hold hands, sway back and forth, and sing everything is beautiful in polyphonic harmony. Hey, any ex-wandering troubadour slash hostage negotiator could have done it. Look, I didn't need bacon breath here to save me, okay? I could have handled those panty wastes. I was just waiting for the right moment to wind up the old haymaker and start dropping the bombs. Yeah, right. All we saw you dropping up there was your load. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, if I may, you should always respect a parent over a close and seemingly more courageous friend of the family, no matter how moronic, obnoxious, craven, and cowardly the parent seems to be. And don't you forget it. Yo, yo, hey, over here, throw the ball. here, babe. Now, here's something I have, uh, shall we say, a small amount of expertise at. I bet you didn't know your old man played a little hoops in high school. That's right. I once almost covered a guy whose dad sold a car to the sister of the All-City High School basketball champ. Guess I ought to show these asphalt amateurs the meaning of, uh, showtime. Corn. Let's see what you can do. Move that cassava. Well, I'll give it a whirl. Shucks, caught some rim. Whoa, dude. Dr. C! Did you play in high school, too? No, I was once kidnapped by a cabal of kickboxing ninja who forced me nightly to play a deadly game of steel cage basketball where the losers were beheaded. Excuse me, Mr. Reed. Bob's left on his vacation. I need you to sign these productivity reports. Come in. You're here awfully late. Insomnia. Ought to stop by my place. Try it with me sometime. Odd. Take a look at the signature you just gave me. Now take a look at the signature on your trout fishing license. Clearly not the same. However, note the resemblance between this signature and Bob Heine's. Those signatures look nothing alike. Maybe not to the untrained eye, but I graduated first in my class from the John Hancock Institute of Graphology. My, my. Seems your Heine's in a sling, Bob. You deep-sixed the old man and set up his dame as a patsy, knowing the minute he was tucked in with a shovel, she'd take a powder to Rio and you could disguise yourself as her and take over the business. I just have to know, Bob. Was it the bloodlust? Was it the power? Was it the money? Actually, I just wanted to be her, wear her clothes, put on her makeup, set free the girlish passion that was dying for a voice. That was my next guess. Didn't count on an undercover pig being on me like pee on a bum's shoes. What gave it away? The lavender handbag. Val has better fashion sense than that. <laughs> You win, Heine. One last smoke? You know, smoking can be deadly. Soaking origami. Menial. Great tool. What's that mean? Let's get physical. Sayonara, Cornfed! Corny! Thank God I... saved my life. Yeah, well, about time I paid you back. <laughs> Listen, uh, corny old boy, you and I have sort of a history together, and, well, what, what I'm trying to say is... Uh, you want me back? But not at the salary I was paying you. After all, you did run out on me. I had to crack this case by myself. Whatever you say, Duckman. By the way, someone who knew you were feeling bad about things told me to remind you that there are a lot of ways one person can be better than another. 
Like in providing a home away from home for a partner, and in being the best father you know how. Who told you that? Your kids. 